This is a love story. She is covered in white while she thinks about how even love will look so much better in black. And I was not too young to remember, nor too old to forget, so I will retell how he had remembered that the only kind of surprise she liked were the kind of paid inside lollipops, chewing gum. He said he had found the one cliche, like white cups taking black lives kind of gun to shave. But this, this is not politics. This is love. at the same time as you grew up in Norway was a time when this culture was suppressed, actually. Yes. What did that mean to you? And, um, my parents asked um, uh, some persons uh, or um, to get some advice about which language they should speak to me <laughs> and uh, my sisters and brothers. And he said... Uh, Speak Sami to her. Len Bertsen Ethanala. Quiros Garain, or Pissin Violet. Lebo have been also yet the Husa. My name, ye cheer. Get a deliv chin barmolo tiriki. Eret Gariai, Iski, Hoskaburi Chokos. Giridi livchen gaunat, sielu faamu rõhtasa, nea uua päin ja altsen pesta juhuki. Hi, my name is Kinesia Lubrin. I will read four poems for you today. Thank you for having me participate in Women in Battle number three. How we are astonished. A hand forced into a mouth, a hinge, a rattling jaw, a jolt and two eyes startle. So we march. At the sounds of wooden lids, where the traffic of watching slows, the hand sings while mercury disfigures the urgent. Walk back to winter silver light, back to a cave, to look down while the gamut drown. And skies retreat to hollows beneath frozen lakes. You see the vital mediums reappear, They reel and are opened. If I were more honest, I would find two nights worth more than death or freedom in this street. I would see a form of worship between your eyes. Yet still, we march. Oh, <laughs> 
once said, I quote, these poems are a rejection of the contemporary historical systems that paint black people as inferior. Uh, Kelly, much like you, I live in an anti-black world. You know, the, 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 the fact of anti-blackness is global, you know? So, uh, you know, it's not just black people who are affected by, by anti-blackness. It is something that has had very deep and lasting wounds uh, and catastrophic uh, effects in the world. And we can see that uh, what COVID has done in the last while is really just put a magnifying glass on you know, some of the things that you, black people have been calling attention to for four centuries. Um, and so, you know, that like Christina Sharp says in, in the wake, in her book, In the Wake, um, the, the total climate of the world, the weather is anti-black, you know, and so it does affect um, everyone, you know, not just, not just, not just black people, but, you know, people who self-identify as white are also wounded by this insistence of anti-blackness. And we're all dealing with the entanglements of that. I have a friend of mine. And one day she tells me that she is in an abusive relationship with life. It keeps beating her up and pushing her down from heights. And despite the constant beating, she tells me that she can't leave him. You see, his fist helps her breathing. They are like oxygen. But then again, I cannot start to comprehend how her worst enemy could at the same time be her best friend. But she tells me that I don't know him like she knows him. And she's convinced that ever since their marriage, his leverage has been that her body was a bongo drum. As you speak so many languages, when do you use what kind of language? Well, it's interesting because I grew up with a lot of languages because um, I have roots from Congo, but I grew up in Norway. Uh, but when we came here to Norway, my parents were really stressed because Norwegian is such a small language. So they were like, oh no, you can't only speak Norwegian. Um, so they told um, each of my siblings I have five siblings, so they, um, my parents told them to speak in, in different languages, each of my siblings. So that's why I speak so many languages. And they only did it for like two, two, three years. And after that, I could speak all of the languages. In Wings of Desire, Wim Wenders film from 1987, tells about an angel who loves a person and who gives a gift to his goodness to be able to be in the world together with her. Im Himmel über Berlin, Wim Wenders Film von 1986, wird von einem Engel erzählt, der sich in einen Menschen verliebt und auf seine Göttlichkeit verzichtet, um zusammen mit ihr auf der Welt sein zu können. Der Engel ist auf der Welt umhergewandert und hat das Leben der Menschen beobachtet, aber selbst hat er niemals etwas berührt oder geschmeckt, er ist niemals sichtbar gewesen, er ist niemals gesehen worden. Da erblickt er die Trapezkünstlerin mit dem roten Haar und er sehnt sich danach, sie zu kennen. Die Sehnsucht ist stärker als die Lust, die darin liegt, den Rest der Welt als Idee zu verstehen. Ist es das, was Liebe ist? Seinen Aussichtsposten aufzugeben, zu den Menschen hinabzuklettern? Das ungleiche Paar, der mittelalte Engel und die junge Trapezkünstlerin, steht in einer der letzten Szenen des Films in einer Bar. Endlich sieht sie ihn, sie sehen einander, ihre Blicke begegnen sich. Aber mitten in diesem romantischen Crescendo ist man gezwungen daran zu denken, was danach kommen wird. Die Bilder eines Alltags lehnen sich in ihrer ganzen Schwere auf ein und fallen hinein. Dieses Bild der beiden, des Paares in der Bar. Man sieht das Paar vor sich, drei Jahre, fünf Jahre, zehn Jahre später. Den Alltag. Dass es das ist, worauf alles hinauslaufen wird, hinauslaufen muss um wirklich zu sein, um zu einem Leben werden zu können. Respect. 
Chris Jackson, the history of the indigenous people in North America is connected with so many traumas. What does it mean to live with this specific kind of history? You know, I, I wouldn't say it's history. Like, I think this trauma is, and this is ongoing genocide. This is ongoing systematic racism. This is ongoing, um, ongoing, like, struggles that we all feel every day, especially in Canada and in North America. Um, so I think my job as the artist, as someone who has a voice, is to is to bring those injustices to light, but also I want to, you know, shift people's perceptions as to uh, their own involvement in in our own shared history and our own shared community that we live in now. Sani lahuit, giredet, alichulkalusa, litmun suayit, eo sondope, gauno, rafi. How does it come together for you, words and images within your thinking? Uh, as a child, I really wanted to become a singer, uh, but I didn't have any talent for it. But I listened a lot to music and I read, always read the lyrics in, the, in my parents' records. Uh, so I think like the short form, uh, the poets, the lyrics is like the place I come from as a writer. So. Uh, It comes kind of natural for me that the words are perhaps more important than the story or is important in a different way than the story is. How has the awareness of Sami culture developed in public consciousness? When we began school, as a part of the Norwegianizing politics, politics the Norwegian authorities uh, Uh, but also the, the Swedish and Finnish with the Sami in the north uh, had uh, decided that all children had to go to border schools. So we had to stay away from home for weeks. And uh, even if all the children at the boarding school spoke Sami, and even the, the, the grown-up women who worked there, uh, everyone should use Norwegian language. And uh, uh, the uh, feeling of being taken away from home, from the language uh, you spoke daily, away from that, away from the nearest family, and put into a border school uh, was, uh, it filled me with a kind of emptiness for a very long time. Until I was grown up, until I came to the art academy in Oslo and began to take back my own feelings and uh, uh, to use the Sami language again. Men er ikke hverdagen en hån mot kjærligheten? Eller kanskje snarere, er det ikke noe annet man vil når man oppdager hverandre og kaller det kjærlighet? Er det ikke nettopp det motsatte av hverdag man vil da? Aber ist nicht der Alltag en hån wider die Liebe? Oder, vielleicht viel mehr, ist es nicht etwas anderes, das man vil, wenn man einander entdeckt und es Liebe nennt, ist es nicht genau das Gegenteil von Alltag, was man da will. Roland Barth schrieb, man sagt mir, diese Liebe ist nicht überlebensfähig. Warum ist Überlebensfähigkeit ein Gut? Warum ist es wichtiger, dass etwas andauert, als dass es brennt? Man sieht vor sich, dass der Engel eines Tages verschwindet, wieder unsichtbar wird dass er sich zurückzieht hinter die Haut, die das Leben von Engeln und Menschen trennt. Dass er sich weiter bewegt, 
Einen neuen Menschen findet, dem er einfach nahe kommen muss, eine neue Verliebtheit, um darin sichtbar zu werden, dass es kein Ziel gibt, nur diese Bewegung zwischen Sichtbarkeit und Unsichtbarkeit. Verbindung und Verrat. Wie sonst sollen wir überleben, wenn wir nicht einander verlassen? <lacht> Before sight, we imagine that while they go out in search of God, we stay in and become God, become curiosity, whose soul is a nuclear battery because she'll pulverize Martian rock and test for organic molecules. In her lab within a lab within a lab, she doesn't need to know our fears. So far too grand for ontology reckoning. Did you not land with your rocket behind you? Hope beyond hope on the tip of your rope, with the kindness of anti-gravity slowing you down. You before me, metal and earthen. But I am here to confirm or deny the millions of small things that seven minutes of success were hinged upon. When I was little more than idea and research, in the hypnotic gestures of a flame and Bunsen burner, and into parachute, no one foresaw the bag of rags at the end of the tunnel. All memory now, this paraclete. How do all the generations of Inuit people react to your kind of art? I, I think just kind of thinking back, like throughout my whole life, I've been throat singing in kind of the more traditional sense. Um, and like my friends and family are comfortable seeing me in that, that perspective. Um, and then when I, uh, started performing with Sila and Rise, there's two people that come to mind that were very reluctant to give me any, any credit of like, oh, you did a good job. I even got like, why are you, why are you doing that? Like you could do so much better. It's more of a conversation around should we be doing this in a more contemporary style? And that be, that's because of inter, I think, um, maybe like intergenerational trauma in the sense that, you know, throat singing was very, very like, hush, hush, you couldn't do it. We all consider the fact that we had mastered the traditional style of throat singing before moving it forward and doing something more collaborative. Let my words sweep you off your feet into a world where heroes are made with sobbing as a superpower. And when you begin to go towards your final hour, I will meet you there. As if, as if it was the corner store with our favorite candy constantly on sale. And I will tell you that this is how love is made. Woke up with the night sweats, woke up and the day breaks here. Green shatters, can't breathe, can't breathe or hold on, on here.